Now, if there was anyone in my time here on YouTube that I could call my brother in arms, it would be this man right here. Magnitude himself, the man, the myth, the legend. Uh, you know, both of us started similar times, both of our channels grew similar rates, and uh, both of us have stuck to this goddamn Pokemon YouTube thing for so many years, and we've played many times, and, you know, I had to. We had to have this game, it was it was necessary, it had to be done, closing it out with 4th gen, and that's what we're gonna do. So, I'm gonna lead off with my bronze on. Now, if you know Ding Dong, you know he's a special fella, he is my speciality trick room bronze on, and the reason um, that I wanted to bring him was because I wanted to use an old friend, an old uh, Pokemon that you may recognize. Recognize. So, first of all, I'm going to kick things off with a rain dance. Works out great. Um, first of all, I dodge a heat wave, which actually isn't a huge deal because I believe I'm actually a heat proof bronzong as opposed to a uh, levitate one. So, it allows me to uh, take that heat wave really well anyway, plus the rain will stop it. So I force him into the position where he has to Thunderbolt because of the rain uh, buff debuffing heat wave. He ends up getting a crit there, which I guess in uh, some sense reverses the bad luck of him missing the heat wave in the first place. But um, at this point, it means that I really don't have much left in me. I'm going to straight go for the explosion, and he knows that that is coming, and he has a way to deal with it. Makes the very nice play, predicts my explosion, goes into Burnett, and the most satisfying thing in fourth gen is bringing in a ghost on an explosion and avoiding that horrendous damage so bravo magnitude round of applause for that good stuff and uh well i'm gonna have to bring in my threat so as you can tell this is the reason i ran the bronze on because i had to in order to set up goddamn pearl what a monster if you never watched me in fourth gen uh, then you will not know the power and destructive nature that clam pearl possesses with the deep sea tooth it's a special attack hits something like 550 um they get stab on surf plus the rain boost behind it it is a fucking powerhouse meaning that this bonnet no matter how well it's invested if it was max special defense and hp there is not a chance that it is going to be able to live a deep sea tooth boosted surf with stab with the rain kicking behind it oh my lord the damage is ridiculous and it's dead in a single hit so few more turns of trick room remaining that's why i have the explosion so i can basically minimize the amount of time that bronzong stays on the field and get uh, clampell into there uh, as quickly as possible so brings in a blastoise which kind of sucks it means i'm not gonna be able to one shot this thing what i do carry however is the hidden power electric so i'll be able to do a solid amount of damage with that and then on the following turn uh he may want to go back to the zapdos so i will be able to go for the surf there and it does doesn't really matter because I don't think in power electric is going to two hit go anyway, especially with given the lefties gain. So even if um, he stays in and I go for surf, it will still do a huge amount of damage. At least that's the plan. Uh, and then I can three hit KO him from there. So he ends up going for the toxic. Really, there's not much he can do to me in terms of attacks because he he'll have a water move. He'll probably have ice beam most likely. Maybe he'll have rapid spin to go alongside that. So I'm in a decent position in general and uh, I'm looking looking good here. So um, taking a little bit of toxic damage uh, won't be too too much to matter about because you know Clampel is only here for one stint really it only gets one shot to pull off its tricks and uh, and that's what we're going to be going for so uh, I guess here at this point he's thinking is it worth staying in on the Clampel should I try and go into Zapdos and take a hit because if he goes into Zapdos pretty sure that Surf is actually going to take it out on switching so um, depending on his investment he, if he's fully special defensive maybe he'll live a, a hit but he decides to uh, make the more defensive play stay and he knows he can guarantee he'd live a hidden power electric and get off some damage so he does I go for the surf anyway as you can see it does almost as much as the super effective hidden power so Clampel crashing the waves across the shore and smashing them in Blastoise's face I am going to be able here to go for the final one. Twisted Dimensions do return to normal, but there is no move he can use to hit me with. He ends up having Iron Defense, and I should mention he was playing this on a Japanese version of Platinum, uh, and he used to be able to read Japanese really well, and uh, he he knew a lot of it, and that's why he always imported the games from the East. But um, he has, uh, I guess, lapsed in his abilities. He thought it was Flash Cannon. He clicked it. It ended up being Iron Defense, and, well, no extra damage on the clan pearl there but it doesn't actually matter in any case because i have a little trick up my sleeve now for this game i decided i was gonna bring gyarados and i was gonna bring electivire i wanted to pull off the gyrovia combo really badly but to be honest my best opportunity to do it is right now because he's gonna go for the thunderbolt no matter what to take out my clan pearl 
pull off the Electivire switch in, get the motor drive boost. Ladies and gentlemen, Electivire taunted, uh, told that he was a useless sack of shit for so many years. There was a point in time where he was somewhat valuable, and that was the Diamond Pearl meta game, the initial meta, with the Gyrovire combination. When everyone was using him, he gets the motor drive, and now in the driver's seat, I'm actually running the mix set, because this is my preferred one. You know, a lot of people run the physical one with Ice Punch and Thunder Punch, Cross Chop, Earthquake, all that stuff. I like the mix variant. Uh, again, a little bit of an unfortunate. He misses the heat wave twice. Um, very different to my battle with the Killer Nacho, where he hit both of his heat waves. Steve is not going to be lucky with his Zapdos. And he's going to be even less lucky because I managed to get a pretty decent roll on the damage here. And the Hidden Power Ice is going to take Zapdos out. But as I was mentioning before, this Electivire, not the physically based one, it's the mix set which carries Thunderbolt flamethrower, HP ice, and cross chop. So it's a special mix based one, um, but you need the cross chop there for Blissey, because otherwise that thing will wall you for days. Uh, you you got to have that in there. So, pulls the switch into the Porygon Z. Most likely scenario is he's going to be scarfed and outspeed me and uh, go for a try attack, and that's exactly what happens. Hopefully, I will not get any damage uh, from a burn or get... I can't get... Actually, can I get paralyzed? Anyway, doesn't matter, because I get frozen instead. That is annoying. That really sucks. But it does uh, make up for the fact that he missed the heat wave. Uh, and it means that I can't cross chop the Porygon Z. It's going to remain alive. And really, at this point, I can't do much. If I switch into something, it's going to take solid tri attack damage. And I don't want to be on the receiving end of any of that nonsense. So stay in, take the tri attack. It's fine. Electivire did his job. He killed a Zapdos. He got the, the beautiful old boost from the motor drive and dies to a crit after being frozen. Not the best of outings, but not the worst either. So nice, nice middle ground. So I'm going to go into Spondy, one of my favorite nicknames, um, using some, some of my Latin and Greek knowledge here uh, to create a, uh, a name that only a few intelligent people will be able to comprehend. And uh, if you don't, then you can go look it up on the internet and find out what the fuck I'm talking about. But what I really hope here is that I don't get any status ailment from the Tri-Attack. That's my biggest fear, honestly, because I know Aerodactyl can solidly two-hit KO the thing with the Earthquake. Um, I didn't think Stone Edge would one-shot it, and I don't want to risk the miss so there's no point in trying it. It's better to go for the safe to hit KO with the Earthquake instead of kind of risking uh, everything on the line. So hopefully I'm thinking I can live another try attack even after I take the Life Orb Recoil there. And hopefully no burn, no freeze, no power. Please, 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 please. None of it happens. Thankfully, none of that goes through. And uh, Aerodactyl able to go for the second Earthquake, secure the kill. And in fact, after taking that try attack, is still able to live the Life Orb Recoil damage. So good stuff. In the driver's seat, fastest Pokemon around, uh, we should be okay to go. So it goes into Shift Tree. This thing I know can be a pain and can potentially sucker punch me, but I'm thinking that maybe he's going to be running a Sword Stance or Nasty Plot set, in which case he would want to take advantage of my switch and set up as I go into something else. So potentially I'm thinking, you know what, he's not going to sucker punch. I decide to stay in, I get it right, and he doesn't go uh, for the priority move. He ends up uh, staying and trying to take the hit, which he does take! Oh my god, that wasn't even a focus sash. That was crazy. But he manages to live. Thankfully, he doesn't go for the setup move. Uh, turns out he's a special variant. Goes for the Dark Pulse to just to take me out. And I end up, um, you know, seeing that and uh, that being revealed to me. So, good stuff. Um, I have a couple things left. Maybe three. I'm not sure. But I'm going to go into my Gyarados. It seems like a good opportunity here. Uh, I know I can live any single hit that he goes for. Get off a free Dragon Dance. This is your standard classic 4th gen Gyarados. Gara, bulky Gara, awesome set, was a monster in the meta back in the day, and uh, is going to continue to be a monster right here, right now. As I go for the Dragon Dance, um, he tries to get off a Solar Beam, uh, he, I guess, didn't realize it was Solar Beam, I guess he thought it was a different grass move, probably Leaf Storm he was banking on, but he couldn't read the Japanese, and it kind of let him fail, so uh, go for the Waterfall to finish off Shiftery, his final Pokemon I have not yet seen, and I'm hoping Gyarados is something that can take it out. Dreamtail is the name, Inferno is the poke 
and at this point, unless he has a focus sash uh, and has thunder punch or anything of that nature, or even if he's scarfed, if he's scarfed, he can outspeed me, thunder punch me, but uh, I do have stuff remaining that can take that and, and deal with the Inferno. So, ends up not being scarfed, not being sashed either, probably expert belt or life orb variety, and I end up finishing it off with the plus one waterfall. Garros taking things home, bringing back the dollars, bringing back uh, the victories, and that is going to be the game. So, thank you for watching, everyone. This was an enjoyable game. I had fun with it. I'm sure Steve did as well. And, uh, uh, you know, leave a like if you enjoyed. That would be appreciated. I'm going to try and have a 6th uh, gen up today as well, because I haven't had one of those up in a while. So, keep a lookout for that. And until next time, thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye.